I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down was exactly the same moment the Ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. R really Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of the loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here. Forward. It may be the occasional right turn. So the next question I have is, who placed the wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Uh, allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix right. Ow, ow, ow. The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made. Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. The weight, I guess. Or the, the yeah, uh, the contents are the weight. Uh, I, th I think more weight, because the contents wouldn't really matter, would they? Well, I guess the contents do matter, technically. But it would be the weight of the box. Wait, let me... Do I have any hints of the court record? Now I'm, now I'm thinking about it. I should have just went with what I had. Yeah, it's 20 pounds. That's... that's a big box. But only... 20 pounds? The weight of the box. I'm gonna go with the weight. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight. According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and lift up with the body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means... That no matter who you are, your head would be in the approximately the same place. Cool. And his composure's back. Does she even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Imaginative. You. Did you drop it? Did you drop the bus onto the ringmaster? What are you talking about? Even if I had wanted to do such a thing, I couldn't. What? Mr. Wright. Do you recall the original location of the bust? Uh... 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 Um... I... Totally forgot, honestly. Do I... Ron statue taken from the cafeteria before the- oh, cafeteria. I remember. Of course I remember, it was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Huh, then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodgings house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? Well, isn't that where uh, the monkey's stupid stash is? The monkey could lift that bus. Maybe. You. Well, is the bus even shiny, though? It's, it's shiny. You see, Mr. Phoenix, right? Explain that. Don't forget. You said there was no accomplice. Ah. Uh. Tell us exactly how you, the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. 
Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my, I've got to get my wits about me and prove things happen, how things happen once and for all. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your expl explanation. How did the witness get the bus back from the cafeteria back to his room? Uh, honestly, monkey, the monkey. Yeah, that's only possible explanation in my mind. A monkey? Everybody knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. For instance, he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So are you saying the witness had the monkey steal bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? The judge got so angry there, okay. Calm down, judge. But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Very shiny indeed. Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Order, order. I said order. Miss Juan Karma. Where's the bust in question at this moment? Uh, 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 I, uh, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Huh, this is a strange turn of events. If that monkey did not steal the bust, then what happened to this case? Well, in that event, something else must have been used as a murder weapon. Well, huh. Or maybe this bust was the murder weapon but it was used by accident. That's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's Mountain of Stolen Goods and thought to use one of them. Anyway, I think this is more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron. Just spewing insults over there. Mr. Wright's argument was a bit circular. I'm still a bit dizzy. However... His argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Don't seem so flambloozled by the f this fraud of an attorney. Flambloos? Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah. Uh, shit. There's no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. Uh, that's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn the trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The clown saw the murderer. Who was it then? Mm, it still was the bus, though. What if the bus was on, like... I was thinking, what if the bus was on, like, a string or something, like a contraption, and it could, like, fly up towards Acro's room, which is why it went, looked like it flew past this window, or he said it did. Because it just flew up, and then he took it back to his room. That's that's why it looked like it flew away. And that that would explain why... Oh, that's not... Where's the bust at? I don't actually... Yeah, it's a, it's a photograph, so it's... But yeah, I'd, I'd still think, like, that could easily look exactly like... Maximilian. And it's got the hat on it. All that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go for that. Oh, 
That that wasn't the present button. That was the check button. He saw Max's. But I see who the other person was. Moe saw on the scene. This that, that evidence has nothing to do with the question. Ah, contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Phoenix, did you just whip another language into you? Moe said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. <laughs> How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Moe actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw just happened to be wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. Or a cloak like that could e easily get snagged on the bust if they came into contact. Idiot. Who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on uh, the bust? The question is of utmost importance in this case. Don't you agree? Ugh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? Hmm. Well, that night of the murder, the only person... Russell took the cloak from him. So Russell would have the cloak. I think? Yeah, because yeah, he took the cloak from Max. So, maybe he put the cloak on it. It's like, on the... Uh, I mean... Maybe? Because I remember that Russell specifically had the cloak, but he wasn't wearing the cloak when he died. I don't think. Yeah, because the only thing left at the scene of the crime was the hat. From Max. Where's uh where's my crime photo? Check. And he's definitely not wearing Maximilian's cloak, you can tell. So in between him taking the cloak, which he borrowed from Max, and dying, he lost the cloak somewhere. F full him. Are you saying it was the victim himself, Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim, placed the cloak on the bust. Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Nick, do you really have a handle on all this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting together all the pieces. There's really only one way picture I can paint, anyway. Alright. So you want to know what really happened last night. Let's step back in time. Acro used the rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached the rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room, and then went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging's house by none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Shrilo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he went over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bus hit the victim, <laughs> it magically attached itself to its rightful owner. You waited just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. Eh? Yeah? 